Good morning, everybody. We're just going to give it another 30 seconds and we'll begin our session. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Leanne Bettyall. I am Supervisor of Agent Relations here at Canada College. Also joining me is Sylvie Burns. She's our international student, uh, sorry, international admissions officer, um, as well as our newest member of the team, Laura Solano Moya, who is our Director of International Recruitment and Business Development. Um, and also um, we'll, who will be joining us later is Sonia Takar, who is our regional uh, manager who resides in New Delhi, India. As part of the, the presentation, we do recommend that you hold off on your questions near the end of the presentation, given that some of the answers might be, um, some of the questions may have may be answered during the presentation. So in terms of questions, we encourage you to put the your questions in the Q&A and uh, Sylvie will be monitoring while I do the presentation as well as Sonia when she arrives. Now this session this morning uh, or this evening, wherever you might be, is being recorded and it will be loaded onto our international microsite within the next week or so. Now, for those of you that may not have, say, colleagues that are here, we do encourage you to share with your colleagues the, um, the recording once it's it's available on our internet or on our website, sorry. Good morning, Sonia. Sonia is now here. She will also be here to assist us with some of your questions. So I'm just going to project our presentation here. Bear with me. There we go. Okay. Okay, so let's begin. So this slide here will will speak about the content of the training. So we will begin with the terms and conditions. So basically the agent's responsibility um, to Canador, as well as our responsibility to you, the agent and counselors. We'll also speak to, uh, to the geographical incentives, diversification, IELTS requirements, also provide tips for successful applications, reasons for study permit refusal, student residents. We'll talk highly about program highlights, uh, the commission submission process, some of the processes and best practices, as well as student and agent resources, and lastly, rules of engagement. Okay, so as a partner, um, agents do have a responsibility. Um, so I'm going to list them here so that it's clear. And then, of course, if you have additional questions, please uh, do advise. So as an agency and as a partner to Canada College, you are responsible to promote Canada's programs as well as conduct services with integrity. And, um, oh, sorry, pardon me. <laughs> I think it's on auto, just give me a second, I'll go back to the plan. Okay, here we are. Um, as well as uh, provide accuracy in the information that you're providing to students. You're also responsible to recruit international students who meet the academic and admission requirements in an honest, ethical, and professional manner in accordance with the highest of industry standards. Accurately and honestly inform prospective students of terms and conditions of admissions to Canada's programs. And very important, review authenticity of all original documents. Moving on to the next points, um, agents are also responsible to ensure that all applicants are eligible to enter Canada on a study permit and a temporary resident visa, and that are likely to receive the documents in time for study. The recommendation is to actually receive um, the permits approximately three months prior to intake in that ideal situation. 
Also, you are responsible for furnishing your own materials, equipment, supplies, and other services that are necessary to provide a good quality service to the student. Now, as, as a partner, Canada does have a microsite that has a section for agent relations that will help provide also the materials. So we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Also, um, agents are to be aware of Immigration, Refugee and Citizenship Canada, or IRCC, policies and procedures when providing the services. And we also expect agents to use the highest level of academic advising, recruiting practices and immigration advising when working in partnership with us here at Canada or College and agree to follow our agent onboarding process, which we are here now today as part of the training, um, as well as um, making sure that, um, that you are aware of what we expect a candidate from our partner. Now, we also have a responsibility to um, our agent network. So we, uh, Canada, we have to exercise due diligence when working with agents to recruit international students. We have to endeavor to ensure that agents have the appropriate knowledge to advise students regarding their academic options. Throughout the year, you will see um, that Canada will be offering um, some program highlights, for instance. So please um, be aware of that and look out for those notices. It's very important that you also have the right information about our programs. You would also, we also have to provide at no cost to you the materials to promote Canada and its programs. And again, um, that is located on our inch microsite on the international website uh, within the agent relations section. We also are um, to assist agents in providing specific additional information um, as it relates to a particular student inquiry. So this team here, um, especially Sylvie, Sonia, and I, when there is a query about a student, um, we, we really take it seriously and we really look into these cases uh, very attentively. We also are responsible to communicate changes to policies and procedures. We also investigate, investigate complaints received from the student, whether it's here in person, while they're here studying, or whether it's, whether it's online uh, with regards to agent conduct. And we take this very seriously because we do have, going back to the last slide, integrity, making sure that agents are really guiding the students um, appropriately. And we also are responsible to pay commission for each recruited student that are registered, again, key, that are registered with Canada as full-time students and that remain post the 10-day count. And so up to two semesters that we pay commission. Okay, on to geographical incentives. So as you can see here, we have a, a number of countries. So any student that come from any of these countries listed here are automatically eligible to receive a geographical incentive. Again, as long as they are registered. So you will see, we'll use Africa, for instance, they will receive, students will receive 1,000 Canadian dollars towards towards the, um, their account, as long as they are registered post a 10 day count. So the same goes for second semester. So are, there are six levels as you will see here. Okay, IELTS requirements. So Canada has one of the lowest, um, lowest requirements in the province as compared to, let's see, other college institutions in Ontario. So for high demand, Healthcare programs, students are required to have IELTS of 6.5 with no lower than 6.0. For the aviation programs and graduate certificate programs, the requirements are six with no band less than 5.5. And for certificate and diploma programs, it's 5.5 with band no lower than five. You will see here all the other um, exam and, or all the other tests that we do accept. And we did have uh, quite a few queries about Duolingo. And yes, we still accept Duolingo. Okay, 
So on this slide here, we will talk about tips for successful applications. So applications to Canada are submitted completely via the OCAS system. So we do not receive full application or full documents through email anymore. We used to in the past, but now it's all through the OCAS system. Some of the following information and documents that are required is a study plan, the content of the plan, as well as the financial support documents. So I'm just gonna talk to you. I'm gonna expand a little bit more on uh, these points here. So in order to be eligible to apply to submit a study permit, a prospective student must obtain a letter of acceptance from Canada or college. They also have to prove that they have sufficient financial support to cover their first year of study, as well as living expenses and return transportation to his or, ho or her home country. IRCC may request applicants to supply a police clearance certificate. It is important that applicants have a clean record. Applicants with a criminal record or may pose a risk to Canadian security may be refused to enter the country. Also documents that will prove that students are in good health. This is important. IRCC may request that applicants complete a medical exam. And you also basically, students have to satisfy that to the immigration officer that they will leave Canada at the end of the stay authorized by the study permit. Now, students should apply for a study permit as soon as they receive the letter of offer. I mentioned before that, you know, ideally, if the student receives their document three months in advance, that is going to um, give them less anxiety, of course, and then it's going to ensure that they will be able to be here on time for study for that intake. Okay, so some of the reasons why RSCC may refuse study permits, it may be due to students' ability to financially support themselves, whether the student will leave the country, as I mentioned in the slide before. Choice of programs, the, they may question the choice of programs and I'll use a, a little example in a minute. Um, they may question the student's letter of acceptance and the student's travel or identity documents. Sorry, it's on automatic. So I'm just, uh, sorry about that. Okay, so um, I'm gonna use a, a little case study so for instance, if somebody has a bachelor's in nursing degree and they are from Philippines and they have four years of experience working as a nurse who wants to study, let's say, uh, hotel management, they could be questioned why they are choosing this program um, in Canada. So this, this could be risky for them and the, they may re be refused for that particular reason. This is just an example. So make sure it aligns when you are working with students that the program choice that they are choosing really aligns with their past experience or past studies. Okay. So we're going to talk about processes. <clears throat> and I'm going to ask Sylvie to jump in here where possible. So in terms of processes, um, we do have uh, quite a few processes in place, which um, is so important for agents and counselors to be made aware of. This is only gonna make sure that the applicant uh, is successful in their, their full application. Mm, excuse me. <laughs> Bear with me. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna begin with registration and refunds. So students should not register until they have received their study permit and visa and if they plan to defer. So those are a lot of um, potential scenarios here. If a student does register without a study permit, this is risky. Agents can help communicate this information to students to discourage this practice. Make sure that students have the proper documents before even registering. If a student registers and is unable to attend class, for instance, they will have to withdraw their application in OCAS and, and also complete a specific online withdrawal form. 
This process can take six to eight weeks. So again, we do get a lot of queries about, uh, let's say, refunds. Um, so this is one of the, the things that you should be made aware of. So proper guidance will only help uh, reduce that. Um, the refund request process is initiated by the agent, not the student. And so you have to use the OCAS system and not an email. Um, we have received those kind of queries before. So we just want to make sure that you're aware of this. And they can only, um, they can only do the refund request when the offer is in a paid state in the system, in OCAS. So this is done once proof of payment of receipt for either the deposit or full tuition is uploaded and has been made. So the minimum deposit for um, securing a seat is 2,500 Canadian dollars. And the next step is to upload proof of payment in OCAS. So once the payment has been received, there is an additional step that has to be done by an agent. So perhaps, Sylvie, I'll let you maybe speak about that a little bit, please. Yeah, good morning. Um, okay, so once a student has an offer, the only way to move it into a paid status, which is what will secure the seat, is by uploading the proof of payment. So you'll see an option um, where the uh, where you go in and you look at the offer near the bottom, I believe it is, there's an option that says upload proof of payment. You click on that and you upload the proof of payment. It doesn't matter if this is a deferral offer and you've already uploaded the payment for the previous offer. You have to do it again, even if it's the same payment um, receipts, the same proof of payment as previous. If you don't, the offer will be revoked um, it's automatically done with OCAS. It's not something on our end. It's an automatic feature. And the student then will be very upset because they've paid and they lose their seat. So it's very important for the agent to, to play their part and to upload that proof of payment. Um, it's simple. It's easy. You click on upload proof of payment. You can either um, attach the file or you just drag and drop it into the box that's right there and you click submit. It couldn't be easier and it's something that's crucial and needs to be done. It's mandatory. Also, on the last page of the LOA, it indicates there's a checklist on every single step to follow when accepting an offer and how to secure the seat. So please ensure that you are aware and the student is aware of the steps to take. Yes, exactly. So the third page is very important for agents to be well aware of. Actually, that that's your, your guide, basically, in a one-pager guide. So thank you for, for covering that. Um, also, it could be the fourth page. Sorry. sorry if there's a placement, page. if there's a placement component, a clinical component to the program, it would be the fourth page. Regardless, it's the last page of the LOA. Yes, exactly. And basically, that's a checklist. Mm -hmm. um, so very important. And that's something that maybe, you know what, that's something we will share with the agents, um, the last page or of the LOA, so that you have that handy as your checklist, as you're, you're helping students. Now I'm going to go back to deferrals. Um, a deferral usually occurs when a studies, a student's visa is rejected. Um, in this situation, agents will have to withdraw the acceptance of the letter if the student's file uh, sorry, in the student's file in OCAS. So they have to upload that, that rejection. And also it doesn't hurt to put a note. There is a section in OCAS to put a note the reasons why. I think there is actually, there is a drop down for that, correct, Sylvie? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now Canada's academic delivery plan. Actually, no, I'm gonna jump to uh, the student email. So in OCAS, when, when you're asked what the student's email is, please be ensured that it is the student's email and not the agent. Some of the reasons why is I'll let Sylvie touch on this, please. Go ahead, Sylvie. Yes, hi. So even if your, um, your agency it creates emails for students, it's not, that is not recommended. Here's the reason why. We need the student's personal email address. The reason being is all information that is in our international application system, which is OCAS, gets transferred into the student information system. So that is the student information system contains all information that is for the student. So when it comes time for registration or 
for orientation emails, anything pertaining to the student's first day of class for a smooth and easy transition for them to come into Canada, it's sent to the student's personal email. So if it's the agent's email, the student won't receive that communication. Even if the agent says, well, we communicate everything with the student, that's not okay. It still needs to be the student's personal email. Another reason being is I, when it comes to registration, agents are not permitted to log into the student's self-service account. And if we are, if it's this, the agent's email address on file, the agent could potentially end up having access and that is against policy. So we need to follow all guidelines and all policies and you have to enter the student's personal email address. Thank you, Sylvie. You're welcome. So moving on to the academic delivery plan. So Canadore's academic delivery plan for future intakes are released and they are posted on our website. Now we've been receiving inquiries from students about changing the delivery, let's say to from um, on campus to uh, virtual. Um, it's set now. So Canadour is not planning to change the delivery. What you see on the website for, let's say, September is in fact the delivery plan. So please refer to that often as well. Um, just in the event that maybe in January we will release, we will be releasing, or I think it is released, sorry. Um, that'll show again the delivery so that students are well prepared well in advance of what to expect when um, they are studying with us. Okay, so um, students and agents are encouraged to submit the visa application approximately three months prior to intake. I, I'm, I've mentioned this a few times already because it's so important. It's just, we don't want students to be uh, receiving something two weeks before, now they're rushing. We want to make sure it's a very smooth process. If you feel that the students may not receive it, please do defer. It's in the best interest of the student, and this is why we're here. Okay, so on to late arrivals. So Canada College does not accept late arrivals. Students are expected to arrive at Canada on time for the first day of class. Unfortunately, Canada must inform the students if they do arrive late that they are not permitted to access their classes, labs, or placement given they are late. So this may result in academic progression at Canada and risk losing fees. So the fees that they've paid for, um, it would be a shame. So we've had in the past um, heard that agents were guiding students that it's okay, it's permitted to um, arrive late, it is not. So again, I must very, I must emphasize that late arrivals not accepted. Uh, we also encourage students to arrive no earlier than four weeks prior to intake. So for instance, in September, arriving August, in the month of August is, is okay, as they prepare to integrate themselves in the community, as well as, uh, you know, getting themselves orientated with the campus. Also worth mentioning, um, we do have an orientation session booked, mandatory in person here at Canada, North Bay, of course. And so um, that date is on August 30th. I'm just gonna verify this. Yes, it's August 30th and it's a full day. So please uh, let the students know that they, we will be sending emails out about the, uh, the orientation. In OCAS, um, there are many, um, there is a section there where let's say students do not have a last name. Um, so in those instances, OCAS requires something in that field. So please put a period or a dot in that field. So on to payment deadlines and extension requests. Payment extension requests will not be granted. If students are unable to meet payment deadlines, Canada will close the applications and students will have to reapply for future intake. So, and that also includes the additional $100 Canadian application fee. The key dates and deadlines are important um, to reference in order to achieve the best outcome for the student. So please review, again, everything's on our website. 
Um, so if you want to have additional information about the deadlines and, um, and policies and procedures, you will find them on our website. And the last point is a CI CAN course. So College and Institutes Canada offers a free course um, to agents. And this is so important as you're guiding students and as you're working with us here at Canada. So in addition, uh, CBIE, that's a Canadian Bureau of International Education, also offers training offered in four modules over a four week period typically beginning in February. So CICAN and CBIE are definitely great resources, as well as ISAF. ISAF is definitely a big platform, um, agent platform that provides also some training, some great training. Okay, so the um, following countries qualify for the student direct stream, um, also called SDS, as many may, may refer to. Now, the student direct stream is a program designed to make uh, applying for a Canadian study permit faster and more efficient for some international students. So listed here are the countries. I'm not going to name them, but as you can see, um, those who are working within these, these markets will know. Um, so if you have any uh, additional information or if you require additional information, uh, please advise. Now, I'm going to just uh, share a little bit about uh, the process. Uh, so those applications that are uh, coming through the SDS um, way, um, they aim, the government aims to process these in 20 days. To submit an application for a Canadian study permit through the SDS program, prospective student application must, must require uh, the following. They must provide a copy of the letter of acceptance from Canada, present a confirmation document from the applicant's upfront medical exam, obtain a guaranteed investment, so a GIC of $10,000, prove that tuition fees for the first year of study are paid, show proof of language, so the results of the IELTS, within two years of the application being received and demonstrating that the, the IELTS scars are six and over in English or NCLC seven for French and submit the application at a visa application center. Okay, on to uh, student accommodations. Um, or residents. On-campus housing is available here in North Bay only. Um, we, do, uh, we do have another campus in, in West Perry Sound, but we do have um, housing for families as well as individual students um, right here in North Bay. Um, our, our, our residents, we also encourage um, all first-year students to really put in an application for housing. Um, through the residents. This will ensure families, especially parents that are a bit concerned about their child going to study abroad for the first time, um, that we provide 24 hour a day, seven day a week support and in a secure building. So residence is the best recommendation that for students. Now we do understand that there is potentially a wait list. So even if there is, submit an application, get the students to submit it, and they will at least be in queue because a lot of times changes happen. Students will decide to go in the community, for instance. So the residents here, uh, you will see the rate is $650. Um, so it is affordable and it is within walking distance of our main campus here where I'm located as well as Lauda. So they are affordable, clean and secure uh, and they're very comfortable. We also have, as you can see here, uh, so washers and dryers, and you'll see the template or the, the footprint of the layout of the rooms. Okay, some of our campuses. So Canada College's main campus right here um, is a beautiful campus situated right here in the city of North Bay. And we are surrounded, as you can see, 
um, by beautiful landscape and uh, forest-like um, surroundings. In, at our main campus, you will have lots of walking trails, um, wonderful for mental health of students when they need a break from studies. Um, within nature, it's the best way. We also have, so within that campus, and I will touch on a few program highlights in a few minutes, um, we have dental hygiene program, um, ECE, international, uh, the international nursing license preparation program, environmental, we have um, culinary management, uh, and so on. There's so many of them. There's over 80 programs, so you can just imagine. Um, also, our aviation campus is located here in North Bay, um, and that's right beside the North Bay Airport. And there you will find all of our aviation programs. Right here is also located in North Bay is our Commerce Court a campus. And there you will find mostly um, our, um, our trades and technology programs, such as civil and mechanical engineering, community and justice services, police foundation, a machinist program, uh, the computer systems and programming, Program. So there are a lot of international students located at this uh, this uh, campus as well, and so on. And then this campus here is located in West Perry Sound, and that is located approximately two hours from the city of Toronto. And and at within this campus, um, we have a smaller. We do offer a few programs uh, such as healthcare and men and practical nursing. And uh, we do have some international students that are, are, are attending that campus as well. Okay, so on to program highlights. So in this section, we will highlight quite a few of our programs. So I'm, at a glance here, you will see here, as I mentioned, we've got aviation, we've got nursing, culinary, post production, dental hygiene, uh, construction project management, and so on. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to, oops. Okay, the International Nursing License Preparation Program. So this program is intended for um, individuals who already have an International Bachelor of Science in nursing or, or, or nursing degree, who are seeking the opportunity to further prepare to apply for the College of Nurses sorry, the College of Nurses of Ontario for regulatory licensing. So those basically is for individuals who are looking to become permanent residents here in Ontario. And so it's a one-year certificate program. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's basically to prepare uh, the individual for the exam. So within um, the program itself, students will learn um, a number of things. So some of the learning outcomes may include um, using the appropriate technology. Uh, they will practice with legal, ethical, and professional scope of practice, provide patient care in accordance with the professional standards, incorporate reflective practices for nursing processes, and so on. Um, on our website, you will see our within our program section, you will be able to get the learning outcomes. So I'm, I'm not gonna go through all of them with all of these program highlights, but you will be able to see this. As some of the place, placement opportunities within this program, um, the acute care agency, long-term care facilities, public health agencies, as well as community health. We also have a flyer. We have a few flyers that we can provide you. Um, if you want to be able to post and share with prospective students. So the behavioral and science program, technician technology program, is a two or three year Ontario college advance or college diploma. And this program is, will provide students with real world experience through multiple work placements in a clinical setting. This specialized program is uh, will train students to work with children, youth, and adults with autism spectrum disorder or other developmental disabilities or acquired brain injury. Graduates are qualified to work in diverse situations within the community, clinical, school, 
residential or hospital settings. This is one of our newer programs as well. Entrepreneurship management. So again, one of our newer programs is a one-year Ontario College graduate certificate. And this will provide, this program will provide students with the tools to learn to be their own boss and to turn their ideas into thriving businesses. They will develop and explore entrepreneurship opportunities in a variety of settings and in a, in a variety of industries within the program. Students will learn to develop business plans, strategies, and execute effective marketing uh, and, sorry, marketing plans and how to use market research to optimize the operation of a small business. They will gain the versatile skills to be successful in a business or entrepreneurial setting. The Enterprise Analysis and Research Program. This program will provide students with the tools to be, I'm sorry, to provide, sorry, it's, it's they're gonna provide the uh, students with data uh, to uh, be able to read data and analyze data used in many different sectors, um, including marketing, law, community and social services, and so on. Students will gain the skills required to interpret data and predictive models. Here it goes again, so sorry. Okay, um, and they will be able to, sorry, do market, bear with me, there we go and predictive models to be successful to give direction to both the private and government organization. So this training provides the foundation for a dynamic career in a number of disciplines, including cybersecurity, uh, AI, and so on. It is one of the fastest growing fields within the, uh, the industries. I'm so sorry, there is some background noise happening. So if you hear that, um, Hopefully it won't last too long. Okay, the Mechanical Technician Machinist Program is a program that will teach students to produce custom parts for any type of vehicle or machinery. And they offer good paying jobs in the field that are readily available for graduating students. So um, we do have a lot of employers within the city of North Bay that are, are really looking for resources. So. Again, there are opportunities for students that are graduates of this program to have um, perhaps a, a job opportunity for good paying jobs. Students will be taught by industry trained faculty. Oh, let's go ahead again. Um, and you will see in this picture, this lab is over 8,000 square foot. So students will receive extensive training on manual machines, as well as automated computer numeric control, um, machinery equipment, and gain the skills to pro produce custom parts uh, for virtually any type of vehicle or machinery. Now, this is uh, also an eight month or one year, 42 to 28 week program. Um, so this is definitely uh, something that may be of interest to some of the students. So many of the um, industries such as uh, automotive, mining, forestry, and aviation are seeking this skill set. Aviation Technician, located at our aviation campus, the avionics maintenance program um, is, is, students are being trained under skilled professionals to repair and maintain aircraft, electrical, and electronic systems. Now, this program is approved by Transport Canada. Um, and they predict that within the next decade, there will be a shortfall within um, the skilled aircraft maintenance personnel. So again, another thing to maybe consider as students uh, are, are re requiring or inve investigating opportunities on what may be of interest, especially in the trades. The mental health and addiction program is a specific um, program that students will learn 
within, um, let's say the lab or simulation within a group setting. So they are being taught by skilled instructions of our professors. And it includes the broad, sorry, the broad spectrum of social, um, sorry, eh, pardon me, um, for individuals who may be uh, suffering from mental health and addiction um, problems or situations. And some of the job opportunities there may include uh, correction facilities, hospitals, mental health facilities, addictions, so that's another thing, addictions, treatment centers, and prevention programs, and recovery and rehab programs. Okay. Under the civil and mechanical engineering programs, this is located at our Commerce Port campus. Now I'll begin with a civil engineering program. So this is an in-demand program or in-demand in career that has unlimited employment options in both the public and private sectors. Many of the things that we use today, such as, uh, sorry, not that we use, that are impacted by civil engineering, include dams and power stations, water and sewage treatment plants, roadways, and structures, both large and small. The program will provide students with tools of the trades to be successful in the diverse profession. Some of the future careers may include, uh, let's say geotech engineering, highway transportation, construction design, structural, water resources, etc. Moving on to mechanical now, uh, so the mechanical engineering program, students will learn to develop and design and maintain machine components, tools, heating, ventilation systems, power generation, and manufacturing plants and equipment. The technician and technologists are actually sought out in a number of industries, including mining, manufacturing, and forestry. So some of the future careers within these, this program include consulting engineering firms, manufacturing and processing companies, and government agencies. Okay. Now this is, again, I'm gonna, I could go on, we could spend a lot of days on program highlights, but these are just some of the program highlights that that we wanted to highlight. Canada offers over 80 full-time programs here. So it's really good that you do explore our website to see what we have. We do have a program guide. Uh, so I, again, keep yourself um, in tune with what's going on here at Canada. We're also looking at adding degree programs in the future. So, so please continue to look and, and save, your, save Canada and your favorites so that uh, it's easily accessible. I'm moving on now to student and agent resources. So this is just a quick glimpse at what we have to offer to students and agents. So agents and counselors, we really encourage you to really look at the international microsite and it'll assist you and students during, uh, during their consideration or as they're considering Canada. Oops, so sorry about this. Leanne, one quick second, just to chime yeah. in. I've been putting links in the um, in the chat, in the webinar chat. Right. So if anyone, you know, if they want direct links to certain things, just take a look at that. Appreciate that so much. So yes, please look at the links, save them in your favorites. That's the best way. Um, so going back to the student and agent resources. Um, yeah, so right here, there's information about um, the health insurance. We get a lot of queries from students about health insurance. We also have uh, the International Student Guide, which will be uploaded or will be updated in the near future. Um, once students are here at Canada, we do have an internal communication method, which is the ISET app at the bottom here. Um, we have a partnership with uh, the, um, the Ready, Set, Hire, also the Connect. The, the, this is another um, way to to make sure that students are well prepared when they're here. We offer workshops and, and so much more. Mm -hmm. And within of the agent relations section pay, uh, section of the page, you will have photos, you will find videos, you'll have training sessions that are recorded. There's also virtual tours of all of our campuses and labs. 
Um, there's so much information in there that that's easily accessible. So basically what I've, I've touched on today, you will be able to find on the, um, the agent relations section of the page. And we will go on to uh, basically the last, the last slide uh, for our training session today. So this basically is just four points just to consider and to reflect on, to remember these four rules of engagement when you're working with students. Consider the student as a partner um, to ensure that you're optimizing your relationship with the student. Engage, engage with them. The more you engage with students, the more the students will engage with you and they'll be better prepared as they are coming to Canada. Um, whoops. So oh, sorry, here we go again. Okay. Oops. All right. So make sure that the access to information for students are it's seamless. Yeah, they are easy and accessible. So again, going back to the internet, or sorry, to our uh, international microsite, we have a lot of information for students. So you can show them where to find information, engage. Make sure your, envir your environment, whether it's virtual or in person, is a welcoming environment that will provide students with opportunities to ask questions and empower, this is a big one, empower the students to be brave and encourage them when they are provided with the right tools. They will become independent individuals and learners and they will feel confident when they travel to Canada or to Canada um, as they are beginning their, their studies with us. And for further information and support, you can contact any one of us here. Um, and also uh, the there's a bit of information here. The, the right email for agent relations is agent.relations at canadorcollege.ca. There's also a link if you don't mind somebody is sharing the link to our international microsite, that would be wonderful. So that's the link I've, I've mentioned a few times today as well as our agent relations section. And if you want to book a meeting directly with me, um, there is a direct link through the office bookings, Microsoft Office. And uh, there are 15 minute um, spots available. So you have access basically to uh, my calendar and you can book with them. Um, and that's it for training. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank everybody who's here today um, for participating in the training session. I'm just going to stop the uh, presentation here. There we go. All right. So um, are there any burning questions that you think um, Sylvie or Sonia that are worth mentioning to the whole group here based on the questions you've seen in the chat? I think I have noticed a question about whether we are accepting 5.5, .5, no ban less than five from India. And uh, this is an unexpected question because we are, uh, it's an SDS market and we are expecting a minimum of six overall in IELTS. Uh, the website and the requirements mentioned on the website are for all countries. We request you to please read towards the end of the table, which clearly mentions about SDS countries. Thank you. Okay. Um, if there are no further questions or if you feel that um, I see a lot of the questions have been answered, correct? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, this concludes our session. Again, if you need to reach any one of us, um, please do so for, for any doubts or if you have, if you need clarification, uh, we'd be happy to assist. Thank you again for joining us. And there are two other sessions booked in August. Um, so if uh, you have some staff that are looking to participate that did not have an opportunity today, uh, we would definitely be happy to, to have them here. Have a wonderful day and evening ahead. Bye-bye now. Thank you.